Hey, this is His Word Unveiled. Walking through the Word of God, chapter by chapter, letting God just have space to move and to breathe His truth within us so that we can be moved, so that things can happen in our lives. So good. We've been reading about the story of David and seeing just the blessings and David's obedience and his trust in the Lord, how David is just seeking the Lord, inquiring of the Lord. The Lord is hearing him, speaking to him, leading him, um, this blessing of obedience. And then we see Saul, who's just living this sad life that's desperate and striving to kill David, just pursuing him. When, when David is pursuing the Lord, Saul's over here pursuing David and chasing after him and wanting him dead and, and killing everyone that stands in his way like we saw him do to Ahimelech and all of those priests. Um, just the weightiness of Saul's decisions and just this lightness, this, this freedom, even in David running from Saul, even in him fleeing, we see this just this freedom and God just continuing to work and move and, and do even even though David's enemies are pursuing him, even though David's enemies are attacking him and wanting him dead. We still see this just this fullness of God just doing and being and, and breathing in him. Um, so good. So today's reading, we're going to continue reading in the story of David. Today's reading is 1 Samuel um, chapter 24. So get away. Go. Just go. Ignore me for the next few minutes and just meet with the Lord. Read this chapter all on your own, by yourself. Just meet with the Lord. Read and, and just stopping, stopping after a few verses and really understanding what's going on and asking God questions and saying, okay, God, so what does this look like? Or what are, you know, wh where is your heart here? What can I read about you here? What is David doing? Just ask questions along the way. And, and maybe there's times where you don't even ask questions, but you read. And then you just sit in the stillness and you let God um, reveal to you what what those verses mean, what they really look like. Um, let's not get too crazy about asking God and, okay, what's this and where's this and when does this happen and, and, and what's, gonna, what's happening here? Let's ask questions, but let's really practice, rehearse that perfect balance of, of asking questions of letting our heart letting our hearts be inquisitive and asking the Lord, going to the Lord, but also allowing our hearts, our souls, our spirits to just be still and to just listen, believing that God is speaking all the time. He speaks with us. He's pouring out upon us all the time. Sometimes it's just the matter of us shutting our mouths and being able to hear, being in position to hear the Lord. So, Whatever that looks like for you, whatever God is calling you into, just take a few moments, go to the Lord in prayer, and then open up his word, read 1 Samuel chapter 24, and let God speak. Let your perspective change. Let your entire life be touched by the power of God, the living, active, powerful word of the Lord. Let it change you. Let it come alive to you. So 1 Samuel chapter 24, just simply listen to the Lord. Meet with him. Take this moment, just you and God, and then join me. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll walk through this chapter together. So go read 1 Samuel chapter 24. Oh. Lord, we thank you for the way that you've been teaching us and showing us even with attacks and struggles and though they may come, just truly believing and choosing to see you at work in that, that you are fighting for us, that you sometimes allow those attacks to come at us. You allow us to be on the run and really evaluating our pursuit, evaluating um, just where we stand with things coming at us but our position and, and the authority that you've given us and, and the power of your Holy Spirit and really checking ourselves with where our focus is and how strong our faith is and, and where our dependence and our hope and our trust is in what um, it is placed in. Lord, we love you. Teach us more about ourselves. Expose more within us and reveal to us what we can do better, what we can improve on, how we can know you more and trust you deep, um, deeper, Lord, in a deeper way. Just 
remove all the filth within us, all the all the junk that keeps us just where Saul is and just this heaviness and pursuing and and striving and desperate and and being run and ruled by emotions. Lord, just rid us of that. Expose that so that we um, can give you space to then come in and replace and exchange all of that heaviness for um, for just the lightness, for your for your peace, for rest. Or for rest, just that we can replace all the yuck inside of us and just allow you to reign and to rule over our lives, ushering us in to rest, ushering us into more of a pursuit of you, this desire, this this beautiful, healthy sense of desperation for more of you. Lord, we love you. Meet us here today. Meet us as we walk through this chapter and just speak to us. Just change us. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 24. So the end of chapter 23, we saw that David went up and stayed then in the strongholds of En Gedi. Um, so, yes. So we saw the Lord stopping Saul, that Saul was coming after him where they were in the wilderness of Maon, and the Lord stopped him, and the Lord, there were messengers that came and pulled Saul away from his pursuit. So with that though, David knew that Saul was after him, David probably knew how close it was, and then he went down to En Gedi. So then of course, when Saul is finished dealing with the Philistines, as we read in the chapter before, um, he left to be king and to take care of the raid that the Philistines were um, were having on the people. It says, after he was done then with dealing with the Philistines, then he continued his pursuit of David. He got right back where he was, continued with what he was doing and said, okay, we're after David. We want him dead. We're My mission is to kill David. So it says that, um, that Saul then went down to En Gedi um, after David. So, Saul is coming after David. He reaches where David is at. In verse 3 it says, He came to the sheepfolds on the way where there was a cave and Saul went in to relieve himself. So they are at the same place, at the same cave, the same area of En Gedi. It says, Now David and his men were sitting in the inner recesses of the cave. So David and his men are camped out inside this cave. Saul is journeying with his men. He goes into this cave, it says, to relieve himself. So as he's going potty potty, David sees him and there's this encounter with him that David is faced then with um, this opportunity, this opportunity to destroy the one who's been pursuing and chasing after him. So in verse four, it says, the men of David said to him, behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, behold, I'm about to give your enemy into your hand and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David arose and cut off the edge of Saul's rope. It came about afterward that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. So he said to his men, Far be it from me because of the Lord that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him since he is the Lord's anointed. And get this in verse 7. David persuaded his men with these words and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul arose, left the cave, and went on his way. Okay, we're going to hit these verses um, for a while in just talking about this. So understanding what's going on. So he said they're in the same cave. Saul went in to use the restroom inside this cave. David and his men were there. Then David's men said, hey, God has given you this time. This is what God meant saying that he's going to give your enemy into your hand. They're saying, get up, do like he's right here. All you got to do is go up there and kill your enemy. God's giving you your enemy. Here is your opportunity. Um, so the men are trying to persuade David to take action, to get up and, and to go do what he can do, what he has the opportunity to do, and to stop this chase, to not run anymore, to take care of his enemy. And they're saying, look, God's doing this. God's giving him to you. So thinking of this, um, we go back then a few chapters and remember that Saul feared that he would be rejected as king. So because of that, he let the people persuade him into disobeying God. So going back to 1 Samuel 
15, chapter 24, we see this. Where it says, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have indeed transgressed the command of the Lord in your words because I feared the people and listened to their voice. So Saul let the people persuade him into acting disobediently. He feared the people, and we see that clear as day. The people persuaded him. So thinking on this and reading what we just read, if David would have done as Saul did, then Saul would have died. So Saul let the people persuade him into being disobedient, into not listening to the voice of the Lord. If David let the people persuade him the way that Saul let the people persuade him, Saul would be dead. The people were persuading David saying, hey, get up. The Lord has given your enemy into your hand. Go take action. Take care of this. This Everything can stop. He's given you this opportunity. Go, rise up, do what needs to be done. David then gets up. He cuts the edge of Saul's robe off. So Saul is standing there. He secretly comes, cuts the robe off. It says afterward, though, that he felt he he was convicted. It says um, David's conscience bothered him. He was convicted about that, about even cutting his robe off. But he wasn't persuaded by men to 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 actually completely destroy Saul. Now he acted and he cut that robe and it says he felt convicted. And then he responded to that conviction. But let's just think and compare the way that Saul, Saul's disobedience in um, being persuaded by the men and, and what he did. He said he feared the people. Then these men were trying to persuade David, hey, here, let's let's do this. Let's take care of your enemy. Let's, let's let this all go away. Um, he's here. God's giving you, so let's do this. The men are speaking this. And it sounds right, right? That, hey, God's given you. God's you've been you've been blessing uh, blessed. You've been trusting the Lord. God's provided for you, and now He's providing this for you. It sounds right. It sounds good. They tried to persuade the men, but David was connected to the Lord. David was listening to the Lord, and because of that, he felt convicted. The Lord spoke to him, and he listened to the Lord in that. Then in verse 6, it says, "Far, Far be it from me because of the Lord that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed. David says, well, I'm not going to do this. I may have cut off the robe and now I'm feeling convicted. I'm stepping back from that, but I'm not moving forward into what you're persuading me into doing and into what this could lead into. This is Saul is the Lord's anointed. And he says, I cannot, I will not stretch out my hand against him since he is the Lord's anointed. So we saw that the men persuaded Saul to disobey. Then we saw here in this chapter that the men were trying to persuade David into into killing Saul, into taking matters into David's own hands and doing, you know, taking control, taking power over that. But then here's the beautiful result in verse 7. David persuaded his men with these words, with these words that, hey, Saul is is the Lord's anointed. The Lord anointed Saul. Therefore, I am not putting my hand against him. I will not. And in those words and in that boldness and in that that humility, that there was no pride in this. There was no, hey, this is my time to shine. Hey, this is my time to show him what's up. Hey, this is my time to show my enemy, you know, that that if he knew what was good for him, he'd step down. This was in humility that David was speaking this and he spoke these words that, hey, this is the Lord's anointed. And 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 through that, it was clear in David saying, I know whose I am. I know who I follow, the Lord. And I know who the Lord anointed for such a time as this. He's fully aware that he was anointed as the next king, but he's not king yet. This wasn't his time. He was aware that this is Saul's time, that he was still the anointed king. And it was those words, those words that, that persuaded his men. And it says, and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul left. Um, he arose and left the cave and went on his way. So in all of this, he's, you know, men are persuading Saul. The men are trying to persuade David. But the ending result is that David's words, that his trust in the Lord, his response even to being convicted and allowing his conscience to bother him and just cutting off the robe and getting that close to God's anointed. anointed. He let those words and his action 
um, his actions and his words to persuade the men hands off that we're not going up against Saul because he's the anointed of God. Even though he is their enemy, even though he's out seeking them, hunting them down to kill them, even though he was doing that, um, David in his humility and in his love and in his trust and dependence on the Lord persuaded the men, hey, uh-uh, we're not touching the Lord's anointing. We are not, we are not stepping on, on this ground. We're not stepping into this plan, into these purposes that God has established. Then, um, verse 8, it says, Now afterward David arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and prostrated himself. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men, saying, Behold, David seeks to harm you? Behold, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord had given you today into my hand in the cave. And some said to kill you. But my eye had pity on you, and I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the anointed, the Lord's anointed. Now, my father, see, indeed, see the edge of your robe in my hand, for in it that I cut off the edge of your robe and did not kill you. Know and perceive that there is no evil or rebellion in my hands, and I have not sinned against you. Though you are lying in wait for my life to take it, may the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you you. So David is laying this out and saying, look, this is what happened. This is what could have happened. This is what I've done, that there's no evil in me, yet you are chasing after me, yet you are pursuing me and wanting to kill me. So um, David, again, in this authority, just speaks this out. In verse 15, it says, the Lord therefore be judge and decide between you and me, and may he see and plead my cause and deliver me from your hand. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Saul said, is this your voice, my son David? Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And this is so powerful right here. He said to David, you are more righteous than I, for you have dealt well with me while I have dealt wickedly with you. For Saul to say to David, you are more righteous than I. This is so this is so powerful. And this is what makes it powerful. And going back to Psalms chapter 11 that we read just a few chapters ago, um, this was a, a Psalm of David that he prayed, talking about um, placing his strength, placing his dependence in the Lord, that the Lord is his refuge, that he is speaking this. God is almighty. God is good. He's praising the Lord. He's saying that the Lord is his refuge, no matter how dark things seem, that, that God is his refuge, that God is his rock, that God is the one providing for him, taking care of him, protecting him. Um, he lays He lays it out again in those verses where it says, the Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. Acknowledging that God sees, God sees those who are acting um, wickedly and those who are are um, being righteous and living in righteousness. That David is saying, God, you see, you are God who sees that you are my judge. You will defend, you will plead my cause. And we hear that he is speaking the same thing in 1 Samuel chapter 24, where it says, the Lord therefore be judge and decide between you and me that um, and may he see and plead my cause and deliver me. It's the same thing. He just, he just spoke this prayer. He just spoke these words in Psalm 11 a few chapters ago. Then in verse seven, it says, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. The upright will behold his face. He brings that up. The Lord is righteous. Um, this is so powerful and this in this prayer and what he's praying acknowledging this acknowledging who God is that God is that he is the righteous um the righteous God so I'm going to read this what the Lord impressed on my heart as I read through this he prayed placing God in his rightful position and placing himself in the humble position of needing and seeking refuge in his God he acknowledged that the enemy was pursuing him and he chose to be upright in heart in his response, in spite of the pursuit against him, he prayed such beauty, such truth in Psalms 11, 7, when he prayed, the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. The upright will behold his face. David chose God's way and following a righteous God causes us to live a righteous life. And Saul 
recognized that. He recognized it when he spoke to David in verse 17 and saying, you are more righteous than I. So again, following a righteous God causes us to live a righteous life. Saul saw that. He saw that clearly. You are more righteous than I, for you have dealt with me while I have dealt um, wickedly with you. You have declared today that you have done good to me, that the Lord delivered me into your hand, and yet you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away safely? So he's saying, if I was an enemy, would you have let me go? So he's saying, you see me as not an enemy. You see me as the Lord's anointed. You see me for who I truly am. That Saul was acting and responding in this enemy mentality that, that he's after David, that David's an enemy, that David's against him. Out of fear, out of anger, out of all of this, he's pursuing David. Yet even from this pursuit, even from this attack, even from this threat, David then chooses to spare his life, meaning that he chooses not to see Saul as his enemy. We've got to we've got to understand this and grab a hold of this that we can't see those people against us speaking wrongly against us, doing things against us. We can't see them as our enemy. We have to see them as one who God loves. One <coughs> one who God is pursuing. We can't be focused on their pursuing us, they're attacking us. We have to choose to see them, to remove the blinders, to have our eyes open, to see them the way God sees them, to see them as one who God is pursuing. God pursues them. We can't focus on their pursuit and attack of us. We have to choose to see God's pursuit of them, God's love for them, God's doing whatever it takes to get a hold of them, including that whatever it takes could be included in our being attacked. He could want to use us to get to them, use us to humble them, use us to reveal to them who they really are. That's power. It all comes down to identity and to our perspective. Are we choosing to see people and to see our circumstances, the situations around us? Are we choosing to see them out of this, this fleshly perspective, this, these emotions that swell up within us way too, way too often. Are we choosing to take on God's eye view, to take on his perspective, to see people and situations, circumstances, pain? Are we willing to see pain through his eyes, through the power of, of his spirit, of his grace, of his love, of his purpose, of his will and his calling upon our lives. What perspective are we taking on? In verse 20, it says, Now behold, I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand. Um, so good. This is, this is so good. Things are revealed. When truth is lived out, when grace is lived out, when love, when we are driven in love and we choose to see people and things through the lens of God, when we do that, then truth is revealed. Then who God is and who we are in the Lord, it's revealed and revealed in the most powerful way, in, in such beauty and such just, in such just real big, powerful stuff. <laughs> like that doesn't sound very like fancy, <laughs> eloquent or anything, but it's just real. And not only do we feel it and we see it, um, it's evident to others. It is, it is evident to others. We see that Saul says in verse 20, now behold, I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand. And, and even Saul acknowledging, you are more righteous than I. So good. That all, man, all that is just so powerful. The way, the way God works, the way we're blessed, the way God's power is released, that he chooses to use us. He chooses to use us in our weakness to release his power from and through, to use us to impact the world, to use us to reveal to the world that, that what God who God is and what he gives to us. Oh my word. It's so good. It's so 
it's so real. It is the real deal. That's, ah, uh, that's it. Okay. So that's it. That's all I got through this chapter. Um, man, he's good, man. Man, God is good. That's all I got. Thanks for walking this out with me. Thanks for learning and just being a part of this journey um, and just choosing to hear. It's just this declaration and saying, God, we're listening. We're ready. We trust you. We love you. You are so much bigger than anything that comes up against us. It's this declaration and saying, all right, God, just have your way. Just We want to let you happen. We want to be changed. We want to be changed by you. We want to be transformed in all that he is. All that he is. So good. Thanks for walking this out with me. Let's keep rolling on through our next few chapters. We're going to hit a lot of Psalms. So um, this should be good. This should be just a change off of these stories, off of, of just rolling in the Old Testament, just the, the storylines, the timelines of things. And we're going to hit um, a lot of chapters in Psalms. So this should be good. The next, uh, the next few days, the next few chapters that we hit, next few videos. So stick with me. Um, I like this. This will be a good shift, a good, a, a good switch with things. Um, it'll be good. It'll be so good. So thanks so much. Let's keep journeying together, growing, and being changed together because of the power of his spirit, of his presence. So good. Um, please keep watching these. Keep doing this with me, doing life. Let's just do life together in him. So good. Giving him glory. So mm, totally hope to see you soon on my next videos. That's all I got. Leaving you with that. Uh, see you soon.